What's up, you mountain enthusiasts? My name is Anthony Soul, and today we're gonna to talk about the things that you need to do moving here to Breckenridge, Colorado. I've lived in Breckenridge for over seven years now, and I have a pretty good idea of the things that you need to do to enjoy yourself while you're out here, so let's get right into it. Now, if you guys have any questions, I am a local real estate agent here with Sotheby's International Realty, and I'm happy to help you buy or sell your homes out here, and I wanna to talk to you all about why you should be living here. So the number one thing that you gotta do when you move out here is going to be skiing and is the reason that I moved out here. I grew up on the East Coast where powder days uh, at this point are kind of fleeting. I still have buddies on the East Coast and they say the winters are miserable. I remember growing up as a kid and we used to get snow all the time, but now it just feels like the East Coast doesn't get hardly anything. So um, I didn't really ski growing up. Ironically enough, my fiance, who was my girlfriend at the time, taught me how to ski. And you know, we'd have uh, very limited days on where we could ski and even if we were to ski it wasn't great snow very icy a lot of overcast it was cold on the east coast so skiing wasn't that great and it wasn't until i moved out here that i really fell in love with the sport because i had the opportunity to ski the epic mountains that we have out here the first mountain that i skied uh, was here in summit county arapaho basin which is uh, commonly referred to as the legend because Arapaho Basin is just one of the OGs of ski resorts here in Colorado and it really upped my game. Uh, when I first moved out here with my fiance, we were basically living the ski bomb life, working for Vail Resorts, basically taking six months off of uh, being professionals, you could say. And we got to skiing and I think we skied somewhere around 70 days that year. And if you think about it, you know, back on the East Coast, I would maybe ski uh, four, five, six days a season uh, when I first started back when I was about 19, 20. And then now at 28, you know, skiing 70 days a year plus, I got really good really, really fast. And plus the mountains out here have some of the best terrain in the world. Plus we get a lot of snow out here in Colorado. So I got to learn how to ski in the powder. And I just got really, really good at skiing and fell in love with it even more so than I did when I first started. So. Uh, that's going to be the number one reason you got to move out here is because experiencing the terrain that's out here, the mountains, the vibe, the community, all together just makes for the best skiing experience in the entire world. All right, before we head on to the next things that you have to do when you're here in Summit County, Colorado, I want to know what is your favorite thing to do out here? Is it skiing? Is it hiking? Is it all these things that we're going to talk about? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, if you're a big nature enthusiast, you're going to love this number two thing, and that is hiking. The summers here are incredible, as I've mentioned in previous videos. It generally never gets above 85 degrees, and the sun is shining, it's dry, so it lends itself to perfect hiking opportunities. And one of the most famous hiking opportunities that you can do out here is hiking the 14ers, the famous 14ers here in Colorado. If you don't know what a 14er is, it's basically a mountain peak that is above 14,000 feet. I think we have about 53 of them, if I'm not mistaken. And it is a huge thing for a lot of uh, hiking enthusiasts to go and hike those 14ers, do all of them. Some people even do them in the summer. Some people will try to do them as fast as humanly possible. Uh, but when we first did our first 14er, uh, one of which we have here in Summit County, which is Quandary Peak, it was a uh, harrowing experience, I guess you could say. Now, me and my fiance are no slouches. We are very athletic. We work out five to six times a week. We go skiing. Um, we hiked a ton back in New York. But the difference between being on the East Coast or wherever you're from and Summit County is that altitude. And there is something that happens, I think, around 10,000, 10,500 feet, at least psychologically, definitely uh, with your lungs, that the air just gets so thin up here and it is freaking hard to breathe. So hiking that 14er, although it was less vertical feet than, say, hiking a uh, 46er uh, over in the Adirondacks Peaks in, in New York, the hiking was just harder because of the lack of oxygen. So getting up, you know, once you're uh, 11,000 feet, 11, 5, 12,000, you start getting above tree line, and every breath is freaking laboring, man. So I remember thinking to myself, like, man, I'm so athletic. I'm going to kill this hike. It's going to be awesome. 
And then once I, you know, maybe about a thousand feet to the top, that last thousand feet was a freaking haul, man. It was very tough, but you know, getting to the top was extremely rewarding uh, being that you're above tree line, you're on the tallest mountains in the entire country, and you've got these expansive 360 views. You can see as far as the eye can see, and it is incredible. And it's also great too for navigation. Uh, when you're up that high above tree line, it's very easy to see very far into the distance. So you can kind of know where you're going. Uh, back in New York, hiking those Adirondack peaks, very thick pine forest. Um, you can get lost very, very easily and nothing went above tree line. So if you didn't know where you were and a lot of those trails weren't very well marked, you can get lost very easily. Colorado, very much not the case. It's very easy to find your way. Um, generally speaking, you have service in a lot of these remote areas. And like I said before, once you're above tree line, you can kind of see as far as you'd like. So very hard to get lost out there. And so hiking a 14er, it was a super rewarding experience for us. Um, it's not my go-to now. I like more a waterfall hike. So we've got one here in Silverthorne. You can go uh, or over towards Willow Creek Falls, which is beautiful. It's not a very hard hike. You're not going above tree line. You've got this beautiful waterfall going into the Willow Creek and it's amazing. It's right out our back door practically. So, um, but you know, whatever kind of hiking that you're into, Summit County has it. So definitely one of the best reasons to be here in Breck. All right, number three thing that you have to do being out here in Summit County and Breckenridge is going to be the views, man. The vistas, the mountain peak, everything about Colorado is just mwah, beautiful. There's a reason we call it God's country. And it's because these mountain peaks are colossal, they're epic, they're just overwhelming in like this beautiful kind of sense. And uh, I grew up, again, in New York uh, on a lake and I had what I considered mountains. I think the highest one was about, I don't know, 800 to 1,000 feet above uh, the lake. And I thought that was like a mountain, which in New York practically is when you're coming uh, from that area. But when I got here, and I saw real mountains, rocky mountains for the first time, I was almost in tears, really, because it was just the most beautiful thing that I had ever seen. Like, literally, like, God's hand like formed this specifically so we could enjoy this beauty. And when you get here for the first time, you're going to be taken aback. And it's, again, it's just overwhelming. It's amazing. And it's one of the best things uh, to do here. Drive around Colorado Rocky Mountains and just check out the views because they are endless. And some of our favorite things to do, especially on a summer day, just take the truck out, go for a drive, go look at a pretty view, go stop off the side of a highway somewhere, uh, pull up a hammock, chill in the back of the truck, have a picnic and just look at the Rocky Mountains because they are incredible. Now, number four thing that you gotta do, and I personally haven't done yet, and I'm kind of kicking myself because I really would like to get into it, um, but it is big game hunting out here in Colorado. And if you talk to any big game hunters, when you mention Colorado, their ears perk up because Colorado has some of the best big game hunting in the country. Actually, ironically enough, I live in the Ptarmigan neighborhood here in Silverthorne and just into the Williams Fork Peak Range, the Ptarmigan Mountain Range, whatever you want to call it, we actually have one of the biggest, if not the biggest, elk herd in the world. So I talk to a lot of big game hunters out here and they say this is their favorite spot to hunt because there is just such an abundance of opportunity for big bull elk, especially if you're a trophy hunter. If you're going for meat, obviously going for that cow elk to get some of that tender meat. But we've got uh, such an abundance of big game here, especially this stretch between Silverthorne and going all the way up to Steamboat. I constantly drive that road all the time to go snowmobiling. And <laughs> we have a game uh, to guess how many deer and elk that we can see along the way. And usually uh, we stop count, we lose count after about like 150, 200 or so. So we always see big game out here. And if you're looking to hunt, uh, you definitely should get into it. It's not cheap for sure. Uh, getting an out of state elk tag, I think is like in the six, $700 uh, price range. But when you get that animal for the first time, I can imagine it's gotta be an amazing experience. Um, I did a, a little bit of uh, hunting with my father back in New York, but never really got into it fully. So definitely something you have to do, especially if you're a big game hunter, uh, do it out here in Colorado. You're gonna love it. All right. One of my favorite things to do is mountain biking. Mountain biking is 
incredible out here and it's one of my favorite ways to get my cardio in. I'm not a big uh, runner or sit on the treadmill kind of guy, um, although I do have a stationary bike and a rower upstairs. I generally don't like doing my cardio inside. I kind of just do it for my overall health, but that's where the mountain biking comes in. You get a mix of that cardio, especially at this altitude climbing these mountains. It's a sick workout. And then you get the downhill adrenaline filled experience since I'm an adrenaline junkie myself. I absolutely love it. And there are tons of trails to do out here. I've got one in my backyard going up to the Ptarmigan Peak Wilderness, which is a great ride. Um, some of the ones I really prefer though are over towards Dillon, the Oro Grande going into the Tenderfoot Trail System. And then we've got the dump trails over in Dillon by the garbage dump there. Great flowy trails if you don't want anything too technical. And then as you go over towards Breckenridge, we've got the majority of our mountain biking trails over in that area. Uh, as I mentioned before, behind Carter Park, going up towards Barney Flow, Barney Ford, all those trails. Breckenridge Mountain itself has some great trails. The Peaks Trail going from Breckenridge to Frisco is awesome, especially if you're not a big uh, climber. Um, you kind of get a great cross country experience. You can really think of it as like, every kind of mountain biking trail in one. You've got the cross country, you've got the technical riding, you've got a little bit of a climb, you've got a great downhill. And if you go from Breckenridge to Frisco, it's mostly downhill, which is great because it's about an eight mile trail. So it's a great, uh, you know, one, two, three hour, depending on your riding ability. And then you can take the shuttle from Frisco back to Breckenridge, throw your bike on the bus bike rack and just be shuttled back so you don't have to climb, which is great. So mountain biking here is endless. It's a hell of a workout. If you're a big adrenaline junkie, you're going to love it. And yeah, mountain biking, something you definitely gotta do. Plus I would say one of the best things about mountain biking is right after a mountain biking ride, going downtown Breck or any of the towns here in Summit County and grabbing an ice cold beer, there is no feeling like pushing yourself on an epic mountain bike ride and then getting an ice cold beer right afterwards. Literally what dreams are. Now number six, we're gonna talk about one of the most relaxing things to do here in Breckenridge, and that's gonna be hot springs. Now, we don't have hot springs here in Summit County, but within a 30 minute to an hour drive away, you can get access to hot springs. Uh, some of the ones that I really like are hot sulfur springs about an hour north, strawberry hot springs and steamboat is a great option. My all time favorite is going to be Iron Mountain hot springs and Glenwood Springs which is about an hour and a half drive. Make a day of it, it is incredible. We went there last time and we had uh, such a great experience and it's a lot more upkept, I would say, than other uh, hot springs in Colorado. A lot of hot springs uh, tend to just kind of be like hole in the wall. You, like, you just basically show up, you bring your own towel, bring your own stuff, you just jump in the pool, jump out, you don't even shower, there's no locker rooms or anything like that. But Iron Mountain Hot Springs has everything you need. They've got a great locker room, shower, They've got locks on the lockers so you can lock all of your stuff away. They've got a bar and a food area so you can get a pizza, you can get some good food, you can get a drink. And then they've got tons of individual pools. So uh, it's great because everybody can kind of have their own pool even when the place is crowded. And then the coolest thing about it is they have the adults only section, uh, meaning only people 18 years old and older can go over there so you don't have all the kids yapping around. And then that adult pool also has these themed hot spring pools that are made to match the minerals found in hot springs all around the world. And so I think the one that I really enjoyed, uh, probably it was either Japan or Italy maybe, I don't know, there was something about it. It had a high level of magnesium and magnesium for some reason just tends to relax me like no other hot spring a mineral does. And I really, really enjoyed that. Plus I had a pina colada that I was sipping on. I mean, you literally cannot beat it. Oh yeah, on top of that, you got the uh, river running right through in the background there. Um, it's freaking awesome. Man. Hot springs are definitely a great way to experience what we have to offer here in Colorado. Now I would say the best time to do hot springs, probably in the middle of the winter, honestly. Uh, going in summertime could be a little hot, especially with the sun beating down on you at this altitude. I like to go in the middle of the winter when it's cold out. You get into the hot pool, it warms your body up, but your head's above water, so you uh, you get the cold air hitting your head and it kind of balances everything out. So it's a nice relaxing experience. If you go in the summertime, the pool is hot and then your head out of water is hot. It's not my favorite, so I'm definitely going in the winter time uh, and that's probably the best time. Now, speaking of water, we're gonna talk about the next thing, which is fly fishing here in Colorado. Uh, bit of a learning curve, I will not lie. The first time I went fly fishing, 
I uh, would watched a couple of YouTube videos and my buddy kind of explained uh, the whole technique of casting back and forth and uh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I got freaking pissed. <laughs> so pissed in fact that I broke my sunglasses. I literally grabbed them off my head, I threw them on the ground because I was extremely pissed at how many times I was getting tangled fly fishing. But eventually I started to pick it up, I started to learn the proper technique to fly fish and then I actually ended up catching my first trout in the Blue River just north of Breckenridge and I tell you um, what an amazing experience. I was elated to have finally landed my first trout and I'm a person who loves challenges so if you've never fly fished before maybe you grew up spin casting like on a lake where you just toss the line you wait for the fish to come this was a whole different thing it's like learning a whole new language really between entomology and studying studying bugs learning how to cast learning all the different knots all the different flies to match the the bug spawn at the time anyway I caught that first fish and it was wow what a wonderful experience so I highly recommend if you haven't tried fly fishing Fishing, come try fly fishing um, it is definitely a game of patience but when you land that trout for the first time all right number eight thing something that I have found within the last two years is snowmobiling and I absolutely love it it's probably one of my favorite things to do in the winter and it's two reasons number one I grew up as a kind of a motorhead I grew up uh, riding ATCs which is three-wheelers by the way four-wheelers um, I actually would ride them on the frozen lake back in New York and so I, I have a thing for, for cars for motors I've always been a motor enthusiast so I love that aspect of it and the number two thing is going to be that there's practically no crowds when I go out snowmobiling my favorite place to go is up at Rabbit Ears Pass uh, going towards the steamboat and ironically you get to the parking lot and there's you know hundreds of cars and trucks with their trailers and you see all these snowmobilers and you're thinking well, didn't Anthony tell me there's not a lot of people? Well, as soon as you get out onto the trail, there are thousands and thousands of acres to explore. So we just go up the trail about five, 10 miles, and then all of a sudden there's this giant meadow and we get it all to ourselves for hours. So no matter where you go snowmobiling here in Colorado, you're basically by yourself. You don't have a lot of tourists to deal with. Unlike when you go to the ski resort and you're sitting on lift lines and then all that powder gets tracked out. Not when you're snowmobiling, man. When you're snowmobiling, that powder lands and it stays there for days at a time. So you can go out a couple of days after a storm and still be hitting fresh powder. So snowmobiling is gonna be one of my favorite things to do. Again, I've picked it up in the last two years. So there is definitely a bit of a learning curve. Honestly, one of the hardest sports that I've uh, come to learn how to do. Very different than trail riding. I am mountain sledding, which means I'm going off the trail into deep powder which involves a whole bunch of things like counter steering and side hilling, which if you want to get into snowmobiling, let me know. I'd be happy to take you out. I got a couple of sleds and we can uh, tear it up, but definitely a hard thing to learn. And again, just like fly fishing, super rewarding once you get it. All right, number nine, again, for all you motorheads out there, we're going to talk about off-roading. My fiance and I have a couple of Toyotas. Uh, she's got a 4Runner, I've got a Tacoma, and one of the greatest things that we love to do in the summertime is to go off-roading because it is off the beaten path you know uh, the beaten paths are the paved highways that everybody travels all the time so if you want to take a drive to go see mountain vistas you're on a paved road with tons of traffic tons of tourists all looking at the same thing and it's not as intimate as when you can get to go off-roading on a trail that most people do not have access to so our forerunner is high clearance so we get to go on all these really cool trails where we can go camping we can go uh, look at the mountains we can go bird watching we can go fishing in little creeks we can go mountain biking hiking where nobody else is so i think off-roading lends itself to an amazing experience and a great opportunity for adventure i highly recommend though getting a truck with high clearance usually an suv or truck with full-time four-wheel drive and then pack up the truck get your camping supplies get all your toys whatever you want to do go take some road that you've never taken before and go do some off-roading we've got some great options here, uh, Tiger Road in Breckenridge, going up towards Georgia Pass, North Fork, South Fork, you go all the way to Keystone from there. And Breckenridge is not the only place that you're gonna find this off-roading. Practically everywhere you go, 
In Colorado, you can find this off-roading. Uh, some of our favorite trails are over in Crested Butte. We had this one experience where we, uh, I forget what the name of the road was, but basically it was just a, a little bit outside of the town of Crested Butte, maybe about a two hour drive off-roading, rock crawling, uh, until eventually we got to the top of this ridge line and we were looking at the backside of Maroon Bells, which are the famous mountains in Aspen. And we were on top of this ridge completely by ourselves and at the time the Neowise comet was going through the sky. I don't know if you guys remember that, but literally there was the sky was so clear and there was literally no light pollution that we could see Neowise comet as bright as day. And it was like, wow, what an amazing experience to be surrounded by mountains, have it all to yourself. I mean you literally felt like a king. So off-roading is gonna be one of the coolest things that you gotta do here in Colorado. And this ties together really well with the last thing, and that is camping and overlanding. Now I mentioned that we have a forerunner. On top of that, we had gotten a rooftop tent about uh, three years ago that we strapped to the top of the truck. It's a really nice tent, three-person tent with a foam mattress, um, some waterproofing material, really tough tent fiber. So uh, we're great in most weather conditions. And then I also have an air compressor mounted underneath the hood of the truck so I can air down my tires for a softer off-roading experience. If you've never been off-roading before and you go on super uh, pumped up tires, it can be a really uh, bumpy ride. So that air compressor allows us to air down the tires and then when we're done, I use that air compressor to pump up the tires back to uh, highway pressures so I can go back on the road. But having all of these tools allows us to go into places that most people don't have access to. Usually they're walking or biking or whatever to wherever they gotta go. And it takes a long time. With the car, I can just kind of sit back, cruise around and then get to that spot and like I said that one uh, place that we camped over in Crescent Butte was incredible we aired down the tires so it made for a super smooth ride we were driving through the creek we saw moose we saw all these different animals and then we popped up the rooftop tent we got the grill going we got the hammock set up and it was just like the coolest experience so camping and overlanding is gonna be one of the best things to do here in Colorado okay and those are all the things that you must do here in Colorado now that is a very small list there are are so many other things that I could talk about but that would make this video probably 15 hours long so I won't bore you guys but if this is the stuff that you're into you have to do it and these are probably the 10 best things to do here in Colorado again if you guys have any questions about what it's like to live here if you're ready to make that move buy a house here in Colorado I am your go-to guy my phone number is listed right here on the bottom of the screen that's my personal cell so you will talk directly with me feel free to give me a call or text me and we can set up a time to talk thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.